Hey there, campers. While we're gathering around the campfire, we just want to let you know we are not what you would call experts. What we do have is a love for researching and discussing the lore of cryptids, creatures, and an occasional spooky woman that can eat our soul. So if you are in need of immediate help with the chupacabra in your yard, please consult someone else. Also, this podcast isn't for kids. These campfire stories can contain graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for young campers. So listener discretion is advised. My name is Kimmy, and I'm here with my co-host, Ryan. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Alluring, the folklore podcast where we tell you all sorts of stuff, like history, stories, legends, uh, from all over the whole globe. Woo! And we'll get right into it, and I start by asking Ryan what he found Alluring this week. Um, I'm sure many people will have the same answer as me, uh, this week. Um, I went and saw Dune, Dune 2 specifically, I guess. And, uh, it was a game changer. It was one of the best movies I've seen in a while. We went and saw it in 4DX, which is the one where like the seats move and there's like spray and smoke and strobe lights. And it was crazy. Um, we were not prepared. A little bit. Um, I learned uh, not to bring popcorn into a 40x movie because there's no <laughs> point. You're never gonna have a chance to eat it. Uh, most of it's on the floor in in my local Regal, and uh, so is a lot of the soda because you had to really time your soda. You're like, well, if a fight scene's coming up soon, I shouldn't <laughs> take a drink because I'm gonna get freaking rocked. <laughs> I love the idea of you like. Now's our chance. Now's our chance. Yeah. <laughs> the fight's over. Go, go, go. <laughs> Paul's walking. Go. But no, it was cool. Like the fight scenes and stuff, like the seats moved like crazy. But then like in like the slow scenes when there was like camera pans and stuff, your seat would just like drift a little bit to make it oh, feel like you were like yeah. drifting with the camera. And it was a lot of fun. Very immersive. See, that would make me want to go watch it. Because yeah. Edgar... He he went with uh, two of our friends to go see it because <laughs> our friend was like, oh, do you, do you and my girlfriend want to go see it? And me and his girlfriend were like, we do not want to see this movie. I think you'd like all. it. I think you I, would. I think I would. It's just like I watched the first one and I could not get through no, it. I fell asleep during the first one. I had I, to rewatch it before this next one. This movie nothing like the first one it okay the first one's just a giant setup movie it was still a good movie but it was a lot of setup this one is like the payoff of that whole first movie and it was so good okay well don't, don't give up on the second movie just because the first movie <laughs> it, was, it was rough right yeah. it was it was rough I was yeah like, it was like everything i didn't like about star wars in a movie oh, and that's oh okay that's, that's, the first one was yeah. it really was and that's a really good analogy and hmm. you know it i don't think it is but we don't we don't <laughs> well we could spend a whole episode on dune we're not going to do that to our listeners um what did you find alluring this week um well ryan ryan deleted it as his lori thing but you take sweet ass <laughs> i would bring it back up um, I have <laughs> been slowly introducing our Vegas friends to astrology, and I am quite proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, she's she's slowly been corrupting my friend group with her witch ways, um, and making them download apps about astrology and comparing people and stuff. And you know, it's just really it's all it's all going downhill, guys. I don't know. I don't know what to do anymore. Um, yeah, it, it was bound to happen. I, 
I need you to know I've learned the trick is you just get one person at a time is mm-hmm. really how you do it. That's and pretty much how it went. <laughs> you got one person to do it and everyone else was like, oh, that's fun. And then <laughs> and then now, what was the app? What's the app called? Um, it's called Patterns. Patterns, called. yeah. And I think it's really fun. We are not sponsors of it. I just think it's a fun app. <laughs> yeah. You, you and your friend can see like how your guys' relationship dynamic is. And it's just, it, it's like entertaining a reflection tool. Like I've had friends that are dense in some areas and I mm-hmm. could tell them you're dense in this area and it'd be nothing. But pattern will be like, you dense in this mm-hmm. area. And they're like, maybe I am a little dense in this area. <laughs> it turned more into just a competition though of who has the better star friendship between all my friends. So, yes. cause it gives you like a ranking between like, <laughs> Per- perfect and like maybe not so great so it, was, it literally just turned into a war of who had the better <laughs> relationships so but it was, it was fun my my favorite part of it too they're like does kimmy have a bad relationship with anyone because all of it was like golden or epic yeah or uh chill and i was like i've i've had turbulent ones <laughs> and they're yeah. like that's an option i was like i don't talk to the ones that were turbulent so <laughs> yeah we, we all think kimmy just changes her uh changes her birth date every time someone runs the runs the thing on her she has an account for every person so that everything's perfect that's why i did one at a time <laughs> yeah exactly you're it. like yeah let me just message you my username instead of uh saying it out loud <laughs> very convenient that's all i'm saying if it works it works um Mm -hmm. i i want that to be a mutual alluring thing because it makes me quite proud the more i get you into astrology over the Mm -hmm. years of friendship by forcing my friends to get into it and then (laughs) leaving me with nowhere to go you're welcome um i will do for my nor my actual alluring thing um i've gotten really into press on nails game fucking changer like yeah I I used to do acrylic a lot, but my nails are as fragile as masculinity in the 90s in America. Like, they just, like, they're brittle, they snap under pressure, like, they're not standing up for anything except, like, no, not even that. They, they're just barely holding on. Mm-hmm. So, like, acrylic, like, I love them, but they would destroy my nails. And then gel wasn't the move for me either and I was and I like have been trying to paint my own nails Mm. and it takes like you're there for like an hour and a half like doing your own nails like it's fucking time consuming so I now get like blank press on nails and when I'm just like watching a show I'll like design my own that's fun and you can like reuse them if you know how to sand it right and yeah. you know how to do the glue and it's great because every two weeks i look like i have a cute manicure and it's just yeah, she just popped them on yeah it's nice. that's fun it's a it's really fun i i like to have nails it's like for me it's just a fun thing i know mm-hmm. some some people can't do it i'm a very like I just want it if I not put together on any other aspect of me and I have my nails done and eyeliner, I feel like I'm accomplished as a human. So press on nails, like all the girlies, gays and they's that do nails and are artsy. Think about it. Just (laughs) think about it. It will change your life. You can use all your gel polish still for it and you can make custom ones for your clothes. So it's getting really good at like micro art. Yes, I, imagine I they're super tiny, right? Like, I don't have it now. I made one that had like little mushrooms on it. Oh, that's cute. Because <laughs> I was like, I want one when I go to the Evermore Park and yeah. do all my fun fairy stuff. So nice. I'll have that's to like cool. post pictures. There, it's it's a little time consuming, but like if I could take these nails off, mm-hmm. sand the inside, and I can use it again. So okay, it's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that that's completely different from the astrology thing. But no, I'm, I mean that's fun though. I like it. You crazy. said the astrology ones kind of it was kind of both. Um, speaking <laughs> of uh, hmm, speaking of good times, I guess <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into our episode today. Do those campfire sounds? Do, do you do them now? Do I do them now? 
I don't have them just, yet, so it's still you. Now. Oh, okay. I will Carry do them on. next time, though. Okay. There it is. Hey, campfire sounds. There you go. <laughs> Moth Bam's just taking a little, little extra time lately. That's, that's all that's going on. <laughs> all right, everybody. Tighten that sphincter. Grab yourself a nice big cucumber and brace yourself because we got some strong swimmers and they're coming. <laughs> what are we talking about today? You really, you got really creative with that one. Huh? <laughs> as, as, the, as the weather gets warmer, the desire to go to be down a river or to swim in a lake sounds like a lovely time. But I'm here to warn you that if you're going to take a swim through the river and the lakes of Japan, brace your booties and hide your cucumbers. That's because there's a type of yokai lurking in the waters and it's coming for both. So all our amazing audio listeners, if you want to see this week's illustration, you can head over to alluring.com and look at our blog. You can look on our Instagram or you can come hang out with us on YouTube. Um, I drew a bottle with swamp water and a glowing cucumber in it. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I did for yep. Papa. And, and that's, I, I don't feel there's any You will questions. find out later why. <laughs> Brace yourself, campers. <laughs> um, so this week, we are going to be talking about Kappas. These water spirits have been a major part of Japanese folklore since 700 AD. Though commonly seen through multiple bodies of water in Japan, the most famous Kappa sighting is spotted in Kappa Buchi pools behind the Jokinjin Temple. To this day, Kappas are one of the most well-known and popular yokais in Japan and are seen throughout a collection of different media. So now, let's find out origins for these creatures. <laughs> so where does the yokai water spirit come from? So, written accounts and artistic interpretations of the kappa have been part of Japanese folklore since the Edo period of 1603 through 1868, but it's believed that these water spirits have been part of Japanese mythology since 720 AD. So, this is, I feel this is one of the older legends that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, that's, is, uh, that's pretty old. Yeah, I was like, oh, I did, I forgot we went back that far kind of old <laughs> i mean we do some, we do quite a bit of like bc stuff i guess but like i, mean, I like, just don't see ad yeah. a lot yeah is, is what i've noticed um so some experts say the origin of the kappa can be from chinese folklore or even a combination of both chinese and japanese lore regardless of the origins we do know that kappa which translates to river child goes by a collection of different names and has made one hell of a splash. I could not pronounce nor find pronunciation for the 12 other names. <laughs> <laughs> but it pretty much just translated to like horse drowning or horse drowner or child kidnapper oh or my. or swamp child yeah. or water child. So Okay. To get a good idea of it. All right. So Going back to the Edo period, Kappa played a major part in Japanese culture and was popularized through Kabuki theater. During this time, the Kappa became the talk of the town and was known to be a more kind-hearted creature or guardian to some. Many also thought it to be a water deity and would only become dangerous when people stopped worshipping him. So this Spoilers. idea... Yeah, so we're gonna... <laughs> We're going to see what happens when you don't give the offerings to the gods, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this idea of a kind-hearted kappa didn't last long. It went from respected and a benign water spirit to a man-eating monster. It's believed this happened because people stopped worshipping him, and this resulted in him becoming more aggressive and drowning and eating the flesh of those who got too close to the river. So he really went from... Zero to 60. <laughs> I mean, you know, he had nothing to lose. People stopped worshiping him, you know? <laughs> That's fair. He's just like, like these guys. <laughs> he said, oh, you're going to pay attention to me. Yeah, <laughs> one way or another. Very toxic. <laughs> ah, 
Well, he got it done. It, it may not be the best method, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> here we are. We're talking about him now, so it's something. True, yeah, so you're you're welcome. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll get at least like three weeks of people not being drowned by coppers. <laughs> It, I would love to be part of the COPPA sales board meeting mm -hmm. to see the result of them the next three weeks after this episode is released yeah. and the drop in COPPA murders mm -hmm. and the rise in COPPA worship yeah. and them having no idea yeah. what the fuck's happening. COPPA task force is very confused. <laughs> I like to imagine they make like really weird like high pitch noises so they're just like what are you like the whole meeting freaking out. <laughs> so, uh, let's let's get back to the two sides of this water spirit now. Uh, people were now more terrified of the kappa, which resulted in hot spots that people would avoid so they wouldn't suffer an attack from it. So, locations such as Kappa Buchi Waters of Tono and nearby Jokinji in Tono. To this day, there are still some warning signs saying to watch out for them, and they're always posted around the bodies of water. I think I have what I'm going to show later in the slideshow, but they're quite popular signs, and yeah. I would want one if I had a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can get a little kiddie pool and put it around it. Ooh, I can get like a lily pad kiddie pool. Uh, does your bunny have a little water dish? Oh, she does! Oh my like god! Like a really tiny one for her water dish. Ryan, that's uh, such a don't, beautiful. Don't buy it. Idea. I have a Christmas gift idea. <laughs> <laughs> we we have a new merch shop yeah. <laughs> sign dropping soon. Uh, TM TM. <laughs> um, so even though more people became fearful of these yokais, some still believed they were gentle spirits and wished to be recognized and worshipped. Like. If they just did that, they wouldn't They wouldn't be so mean. They wouldn't be so aggressive. They just want some love, you know? So, to help with worshipping, a few shrines were dedicated to the kappas. Some shrine examples are the Omari Prefecture or the Miyagi Prefecture. I think I said that. Ryan psyched me out by sending me pronunciation of really simple Japanese remember, words. Remember, remember the Karate Kid, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. Oh, Miyagi! <laughs> Fuck, Miyagi! Ryan, you got it in my head. But you had the confidence, and that's that's the important <laughs> part. <laughs> God damn it, Miyagi! It's fine. It builds character. It's, yeah. This is what humbles me mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Like, all my artistic ta talent, all the hours I spend in the show, and just feeling like I'm a pretty solid human being, and then I mispronounce. Yeah. Every Karate possible. Kid fan just all of a sudden stopped listening all at the same time. <laughs> How did we lose 80% of <laughs> yeah. our listeners? Turns out there's a lot of yeah Karate Kid uh, like hyper fans. Also, there's a lot of overlap, and I don't quite get it, but damn. We've, we've never gotten hate mail, but today's, yeah. the, first. <laughs> today's the day. Let's go, bring on. <laughs> so there, was, there would even be festivals that took place during the two equinox of the year, and it was believed this is when Kappa would travel from the river to the mountains or vice versa. So there were now two different ideas of what they could be, either kind-hearted water spirits or ones that would tear you to shreds. But as time went on, it seemed to blend into one idea, and that's what we know as the run-of-the-mill Kappa to this very day. So okay. this is the one that's the classic mischievous yokai. Loves mm -hmm. playing pranks, eating an occasional person, and being surprisingly well-mannered. <laughs> silly little guy. Just, just a silly little guy. And it also is one of the most well-known yokais in Japan and can be seen in a collection of different animations, comics, artwork, and much more. Hmm. So now... I'm going to hand it off to Ryan to tell us about some Kappa sightings. And boy, oh boy, are there actually quite a few of them pretty recently. Um, so, we are going to start in the great year of 1978 in the Japanese port city of Yokosuka. 
probably said that wrong, but you know. Uh, yeah, Mimir. after you just made sure I, I said everything right. <laughs> yeah. Yokosuka, my apologies. Uh, near the U.S. Navy base. Uh, so two construction workers by the name of, names of Makoto Ito and Toshio Hashimoto were fishing off a stone seawall near the U.S. Navy base when Ito saw a little humanoid creature pop up from beneath the water's surface and just stood there. It was about three meters tall, covered in thick, scaly skin with large, glowing yellow eyes. This creature focused on the two construction workers and then quickly left, both realizing that they had just most likely seen the dangerous Kappa. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> I just like the idea of them getting home. And they're like, he was just standing there menacingly. <laughs> 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 that's the sound the kappa makes as it comes out of the water it's like it says I'm here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty <laughs> anyway um, fast forward 1984 Are you registered to vote for this next season <laughs> place your ballot in the bowl on my head <laughs> that that is how you get people to vote. Yeah, that's honestly, you... that'd probably be a pretty efficient voting system. You just have uh -huh. coppers run around with their little dishes on their head. You put your ballot in the dish, they go swim it somewhere. Easy. Yeah. We it, figured it, it out. Yeah. And then <laughs> see, the thing is the fear of death, which is really mm -hmm. going to make you put the ballot in. Yeah. The idea is if I don't vote, death will happen. Yeah, the coppa is going to eat me. Or dis dismember me at the least. Um, so steal my cucumber. Yeah. In this economy, yeah. I better better pick. You only get one of book. those, you know. Like, you don't wanna... <laughs> um. Well, anyway, August first, nineteen eighty-four, <laughs> when a squid fisherman, a fisherman by the name of Ryu Shirazaki, was walking home from a local pier around eleven p.m. What a late night worker! Is that when people fish for squid? Is that night? Never, uh, never, never me fished Google it before. While you um, on story. his way home, he passed near the Kuta River of the town of Tsushima in the Nagasaki Prefecture when he saw what appeared to be children playing near the edge of the water. This was strange because it wasn't normal to see children playing near the rumored Kappa location and also the fact that it was 11 p.m. at night. So, Shirazaki... Um, Speaking of 11 p.m. at night, yeah. So the best time to target squid is around sunset. Oh. Or sunrise hours. All right. On either well, side of high tide. So. Suddenly this story might be a little, a little more truth to it. <laughs> um. So yeah, so he's like, that's weird. Why are there kids playing at the river late at night? So, um, but he also got a little closer and he noticed these kids look a little funny. The moonlight shone on their weird-looking faces, spindly arms, and reptilian-like skin. But, you know, he wasn't one to judge, so try not to think too much about it. He called out, and as he got near, that's when the children swiftly vanished into the water. So, he just took it off as his mind playing tricks on him, and he made his way back up home. The next day, on his way to work, he saw slimy, teardrop-shaped footprints near the pavement the prints consisted of bizarre gelatinous substances that had already begun to coagulate in the sun and their path stretched for about 65 feet or 20 meters for our non-american listeners each print was about eight inches long and 3.5 inches wide so he and a few other locals inspected these footprints, and it wasn't long till rumors spread about there being more coppas in the river. They even brought in police forensic investigators on the scene, and they determined these footprints were of unknown secretion. Um, ew. And <laughs> had a sample taken back <laughs> to a lab to be analyzed. It was unclear if the footprint was of coppa or not, but the locals became more wary of the river from that day forward. If you ever see an unknown coagulating liquid on the street, <laughs> definitely call the, the police forensic investigators. And it's like, hmm, 
Hmm. This, hmm. this gelatinous <laughs> substance is quite coagulated. Maybe we what? uh maybe we <laughs> someone someone call Sherlock. I can't even say that word without like getting a little sick to myself. Which stomach, one? Coagulated know? or gelatinous? Ugh. Both oh, of them is yeah. a little bit of a double whammy, isn't it? I'm a fan of gelatinous stuff. Um, gelatinous. It's so, like the gelatinous cubes in uh, yeah, the D&D &D Yeah, games. Yeah, those coagulate in the sun. Ugh. This, yeah. It doesn't... It, sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> gross. I That's like worse than the word moist to me. Mm. Like in yeah. the ick factor. It's just... I think they're both very pleasant words. They really roll off the tongue. Gross. A moist, coagulating ball of gelatinous uh, footprints. Um, that in 1991, June 30th, in the town of Sayoto, in the Miyazaki Prefecture. So, Mitsugu Matsumato and his wife, Junko, returned home for the evening when they were confronted with a really weird smell as they opened their front door. Wary of this strong fish-like odor, they looked inside to see what was dozens of small wet footprints around the front door in the hallway, bathroom, and two rooms. Hmm. Suspecting a very smelly burglar, they called the police to come check it out, but when the police came to survey the home, they found nothing was stolen. They did see that the floor was soiled with 30 footprints, each measuring about 7 centimeters long and 6 centimeters wide, and having four, sometimes five, toes. Upon closer inspection, the footprints didn't appear human or animal-like, as if they were a type of webbed creature. The police wrote the report and went on their way, and a couple tried to shake off the weird encounter. That was until later that night, when the wife was putting laundry away. She discovered an unusual orange stain on some clothing. The next morning, as Mazumoto inspected the house more closely, he discovered a deposit of orange liquid on the portable stereo, in the room he took a sample to the local public health center for analysis i love that they just bring samples to places and all these stuff I, is that a thing i you love how do? they're like on speed dial like i yeah. like to imagine it's 911 Call like whatever it is and it's like 992 like yeah. they're the second and yeah. then it's like firefighters they're like yeah. no 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 991 Forensics. for police yeah, 911 for police. Yeah, 912 for the weird coagulating substance hotline. And they just come and take it away for you. Um, so the results indicated this liquid had an extremely high iron content and chemical composition resembling spring water. Troubled by the incident and realizing the cops were no help, Musumoto decided to visit a shaman and see if he could give some answers. After listening to his story, the shaman encouraged him not to worry, explaining that the kappa ind indigenous to the nearby swamps enjoy playing the occasional prank on residents. The kappa were harmless, and the shaman told him that... Oh, wait. Sorry. The kappa are harmless, the shaman told him. So, harmless, yes, but Matsumoto found the kappa difficult to clean up after. He tried detergent, paint thinner, and gasoline to remove the footprints and orange stains, but nothing seemed to work. Um, don't use paint thinner and gasoline to clean your house. You're gonna burn your house down. Maybe, <laughs> maybe 1991. I mean, I don't see why it'd be different. One little static shock. That's that's no good. I I don't know. That's a jump. That's to be like yeah. Mm, I know what will work. It's no. Yeah. I tried detergent and then I just jumped to paint thinner. 1991, there were there were chemicals that you could have used. I don't You're know. I wasn't I alive. I mustard but... gas at home yeah. and clean my house? Wow. Say less. Paint... Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, those, not those housewives yeah. had to get through America somehow. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's... This isn't Japan. This isn't America. <laughs> but um speaking of uh crazy good things um let's go to our uh commercial break <laughs> let's go oh that's it's my turn what was the sound it was i think, I think this howling goes, oh. and then it cuts to commercial like this oh 
And if you're a video watcher, congratulations. You don't have to listen to a, uh, an ad. But instead, you get to see our fun little merch shop. And today, we're looking at the freaking juicy, caked up, always ready for a good time, Frogman. Um, we have two types of Frogman in our shop. We have a cute little Frogman, and then we got our caked up Frogman. Um, yeah, just a Tuesday afternoon, just out there, cheeks out, on a mug, on a shirt. It's a great conversation starter. It's a great gym shirt because it's motivation. You know, you look in the gym mirror and you see those cakes and you'll get one more squat in for sure. <laughs> this is your motivation tea mm -hmm. for all our gym rat listeners. Mm -hmm. This is for you. There's at least one of them. <laughs> we, we have to have one of them. <laughs> and this shirt of them. <laughs> is for you. Yep, for you specifically. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, or, you know, wear it, wear it out. And when someone says, what's that shirt? Be like, this is what I'm looking for in a person, you know, just caked <laughs> up. What? Describe your ideal type. Yeah, this. exactly. And you just point at the shirt. But anyway, yeah, come get the Loveland Frogman merch at theloringshop.com. And we will see you there. All right. Love you. And let's get back to the show. Let's do it. Okay, before I get into this, for all of our video listeners, I will post this image on our <laughs> Discord. I posted this because this looks like if Edgar was a kappa. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it makes... I had a moment last night where I was, like, laughing so hard at my computer and he's like, what are you giggling about? I'm like, I found you as a kappa. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he saw it and he's like, oh, I see it. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Have you ever seen a kappa and Edgar in the same room? That's a fair point. You don't know. You don't know. Exactly. What is it? He's he's my soundboard fiance. Isn't that what mm -hmm. we all decided? Yep. <laughs> oh, man. You can find love, but your friends will never admit to it. I'm just telling <laughs> you right now. So, anyway, welcome back, campers. Uh, hope you enjoyed that break and the little photo tangent I just had to share because it just brought me an immense amount of joy. Um, so let's get into the appearance of this humanoid, turtle-like, monkey-like creature. Okay, so stands around three to three and a half feet tall. A lot of people compare it to like a child or a short king. Mm -hmm. Rise up. Or wait, Ryan, no, we decided not... we we said the opposite this year, right? Ryan, you're not a. Are you? You're not a short king. No, I'm not. You're I just accurate. have respect for my short okay. kings out there. <laughs> okay. I was like, when I was like, when have you been a short king? <laughs> you're not a short yeah. king. I was. I was. I was. Uh, you know. You're just more representing more of a solidarity okay. like, type of situation. <laughs> you're like, like, you're like, they can see people can see me above the crowd. So I have to really represent. Yeah, them. exactly. Yeah. I gotcha. So <laughs> they, so kappas are typically depicted to be a greenish color with slimy skin. Sometimes we got some yellow, some red, or even orange tints mm -hmm. going around. Um, they have thin arms connected through the torso. So, their arms can slide all the way from one oh. side to another. So literally through the torso. Through the torso. Oh, it's like a weird. 90s, like, Betty, what is it? That Betty Spaghetti toy. Convenient for when you need to reach something on, like, the high shelf. You just kind of do, like, a little sideways thing, and your arm, like, extends up. Damn. That, that would be one hell of a party trick. Dude, humans are built poorly. This could have been <laughs> us. This, this evolution really failed us at some point. Yeah. Is it's what this is. Imagine, you know, you're six feet tall with a six foot reach. Like, that'd be crazy. You're o it's over. You never it's have over. a top shelf issue again. <laughs> it wouldn't be class separation of wealth and poor. It would be of over six foot and under. Yeah. Is what would happen in our society. Um, they also have very thin legs. Like, they never do squats kind of legs. The Webbed hands. Of the frogman. Yes. So he he's not packing. 
yeah. at all. Uh, webbed feet, webbed hands, and a turtle-like shell on their back. Have uh, we considered that the Kappas maybe are just Loveland frogmans who decided not to do squats exclusively? <laughs> they're... What? It's possible, right? There's Their arms no aren't strong. Them. Maybe they're all core. They could be yeah. all core. I mean, they they probably got decently strong arms. You know, they can yeah, web well, it through their body. That's fair. That's a whole nother yeah. muscle mechanic we haven't yeah, learned we about haven't yet. Even, yeah, we, we don't know. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know how it works. <laughs> we'll find out one day, but yeah, not Either way, they're definitely skipping leg day. <laughs> they don't need it. They don't yeah. need it. <laughs> Um, the face of a kappa shows small beady eyes with a turtle beak for its mouth and nose. The top of his head has a hollow indent commonly referred to as a dish or a bowl where it holds the water from the river or lake it resides in. So it's even known to cover the dish like with a little lid, like a little metal lid when it leaves. That way like water won't spill out because if the water spills out, it loses its power and gets paralyzed. Mm. so it, it's like a it's like a zelda ocarina villain like big target easy to hit yeah. just like three shots and it's over kind yeah. of thing um they also don't smell great Checks uh out. they've been described to have a rotting fish smell to them and it's believed that's because they have three anuses and love to toot up a storm hmm. um i have a theory as to why and we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. Um, so hopefully I circle back to this thought. But And despite their small and weak appearing stature, they are actually hella strong and can easily take down anyone who encounters it. Mm. So they, oh, they fuck you up and yeah. you're not ready for it. Uh, personality wise, they are super friendly or vicious water deities. There's no in between. <laughs> So their actions can range from looking up a woman's kimono to kidnapping or even murder. Uh, younger kappas tend to be more friendly with humans because they haven't learned how awful humans are, right? And older kappas like to live in solitary and are much more aggressive, probably because they've learned about humans, you know? But they are yokai, so even the most isolated kappa can befriend a human if they mean well. So, friendly kappas are known to help with farmland, irrigation, bring them fresh fish, and even be a symbol of good luck to the families that have earned its trust. They are also highly knowledgeable about medicine and taught the art of bone setting to humans. So this is why we know what bone setting is. is so because like of... when you break a bone and you're like, is that what bone setting is? And then you like put it back? Yeah, let me, let me see if there's like a better definition for it. I think the way you said it is the best. Mm. Maybe yeah, because their arms are like flexible. Yeah, because yeah, it's not it's not just for fractures and dislocations. It's oh a good way to say it. it's kind of like what chi kind of like chiropractic. Oh, work. okay, gotcha. Where like you're moving things into the right positions when they've gotcha. been moved out. Okay. Um. Sorry, I, I I don't know why I had a hard time trying to explain that. I was like, my brain just went. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, all right. Oh, and they will even rescue a human that's drowning if they if they like you and your family. Just to drown you again. Just to take you down themselves. They save you, and then they're like, my turn. <laughs> it's like... And then the boss music plays. <laughs> Um, Non-friendly kappas are known to steal farm crops and food, kidnap children and to s so they can snack on them, and peep on women and fart up a storm as they cause chaos throughout the town. They are also known to be super agile in water, but very, very clumsy on land. And since they are river spirits, they thrive during the warmer months, having that be when they are the most powerful. But winter season, they weak. They're yeah, not here for all a little sleepy in the winter time. Now, now we got an idea what this creature looks like. I have some fun facts for this episode about the kappa because there's a lot of ways I could have taken it, but I just want to take it like 
what it's most known for. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> kappas love cucumbers. A cucumber to a kappa is like peanut butter to a dog. Mm. It is their favorite meal. It has become a staple with many kappa-based traditions. So, in Ido o Tokyo, there used to be a tradition where people would write the names of their family members on a cucumber and send them afloat in the streams to prevent the kappa from coming to harm their families if they got too close. <laughs> hmm. They would do this once a year to keep them happy and to keep their family safe. There were even festivals where people would throw a cucumber in the body of water as an offering to keep them at bay. Hey, uh, it's a good thing the kappa is understood because that could have easily gone the other way. Right. And like a kappa gets a cucumber with a name on it and they're like, all right, I got to go take him <laughs> out like for a gift. You know, that was their price. Right. They're like, oh, this is trade work. I yeah. can do trade work. I eat for this a cucumber. cucumber and I drown the name on the cucumber. So they got lucky in old Tokyo. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> They're like, why are there? Maybe they saw the vast amount yeah. of cucumbers coming down the stream and they were like, we can't kill all of these people. <laughs> I, I can't pencil all of this yeah. in. I have a dinner Friday, you know? <laughs> Maybe we just don't leave them alone and pretend we never got it, and yeah. then we'll be fine. <laughs> um, so offering a cucumber is also a great way to get on a coppa's good side. But be warned, eating one, then going for a swim will certainly lead to you being attacked. And I like to think of it like they see you as a chicken. Mm. And they see the cucumber as the best stuffing in the world. And yeah. you have just prepared yourself as the yeah. best turkey gonna, and have dived into their kitchen pot. going to pull <laughs> that shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, get it, get it, guys. Cause, yeah. I have an image <laughs> I'm going to share with you that I'm not going to post because it will get flagged. Okay. I saw this researching. And it's... <laughs> Okay, we'll, it's, we'll post it's that a, in the Discord. Um, a, it is a... Papa yeah. grabbing a soul from the booty of a... I think he's pushing thing. something into it, to be honest with you. I think it's the other well, way around. I saw two descriptions. I think it's the soul that we'll talk about in a minute. But mm -hmm. some also said when Kappa's, this was very rare instances I saw, but when Kappa's got like really pissed, they would like shove a cucumber up there for you. And mm. the rage one must feel to shove their favorite food item up one's other person's ass. Oh, well, that's could not like you said. Imagine. That's what we do with stuffing and Thanksgiving. You know, we just fucking. <laughs> just, may, you it's know, literally the same thing. Prepping. That's what I'm saying. He's about to stick him in an oven. That's an unhinged photo. Yeah, we'll post that on our Discord um, when this episode comes out so that you guys can uh, see that. Because, goddamn. Because we can post it there. But uh, yeah. we will get flagged on YouTube, and I will not yeah. want to deal with that. So, um, Speaking of kappa attacks, these yokais are also said to be the result of multiple drownings, death, and the... <laughs> You changed the text from anal attacks. You what? saw that. No, I didn't. It, what? I put result of multiple drownings, deaths, and oh, I just, I, my dyslexia really kicked in right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you took the word anal right out? That was there. the whole point of the cover. It <laughs> was the transition. Sorry, you guys. Multiple drowning deaths and anal attacks throughout Japan. Let me just really set that in for you guys. Um, so much like other water spirits, they are known to lure people into rivers and lakes and to drown them with their amazing wrestling skills. Now, I could not find how they lure people to the lakes. That'd so, yeah. Just a good time. Hey, big boy, I got a cucumber here for you. And people are like, oh. That could be a good time, like tasty treat, you know. And then people actually want to talk about their car's extended warranty. Yeah, and they're like, oh, you exactly. know what? I, yeah, I, actually, I, I should extend my warranty. You're right. Yeah. Let me let me come do that. 
Um, so I couldn't find it, so it's up to interpretation. I don't think it's anything musical, because I feel like it would have told us musical, so yeah. maybe people are just, like, interested in what it is, yeah, so they, fair. like, get closer. Only thing that makes sense to me, because nothing, like, the smell, like, leaves people offended, and if they get too close, they, like, know what it is, so. Anyway, um, so Kappa can also control anyone simply by touching them so if mm. you get too close it is over chief mm. plus they have a taste for human flesh and attack them because they enjoy drinking humans blood eating their livers or gaining power by taking their shira kodoma which is a mythical ball said to be contain the person's soul which is located inside their anus now right, that's a great name for like if anyone in here listening uses them if you, if you get a new set of anal beads and you're like man what am i gonna call these chair kodoma <laughs> the idea of being on a date and someone's like you want to try my chair kodoma you're uh, like what is that like, oh, like i don't know and then yeah have fun everybody enjoy it people say the way to someone's heart is through their stomach it's but through their sheer kodoma it's through their sheer kodoma mm -hmm. <laughs> also don't google that it takes five searches and you're going to regret everything you're looking at because <laughs> i was like how do i pronounce it and i had the image tab up it was over for me before it even started <laughs> now where was it okay oh and no one or animal is safe from these attacks so though they're most most of their victims are men they will go after children cows and horses and then if you click the slide this is a fun little <laughs> image oh. of, of the kappa oh wow it looks so friendly it looks so friendly Drowning under the water child. tickling just a little tickle tickle <laughs> um we will have to make something like this for the shop yeah. not with the kid i just want the kappa in the water yeah. looking menacing menacingly at them you know mm -hmm. all right so next one now if you can't stay away from the kappa's home then there's a few ways you can actually defeat it and to make sure you're safe and you're not its next meal and to help with that i got a little handy dandy list so did you want to popcorn this one um sure you want to you want to start you want to uh, sure off? yeah so first you could wrestle them uh the kappa loves sumo wrestling and is always up for a challenge if you are victorious the kappa will retreat uh go for the arms mm. <laughs> i like to think you can just pull them all the way through its body because they can easily be detached and they will tell you any like riddle or words of wisdom or even grant you a wish just to get their arms back oh wow uh or simply be polite kappas are obsessed with politeness so if a person makes a deep bow it will return the gesture but jokes on them that will result in them spilling the water held in the dish on their head rendering it unable to leave the bowing position until the plate is filled with water from the river in which it lives. That one's clever. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, they'll be paralyzed. And if you want to take that a step further, um, you can have them be your servant for all of eternity. Oh. Uh, all you have to do is you refill the water bowl. And now oh. they have to obey you, which is pretty cool. So get huh. a little turtle servant from it. Mm -hmm. um, you could offer up a cucumber. Um, they also are rumored to enjoy eggplants, buckwheat noodles, fermented soybeans, and Japanese pumpkin. And there's always got to be some type of vampire thing. So the equivalent here is ginger, sesame seed, or iron. Hmm. Just on hand. Like, just keep it on your belt or yeah. in your swimsuit, you know. That's where I keep my ginger. <laughs> ginger in the left pocket, mm -hmm. iron in the right safety and then the garlic's the necklace that's the mm -hmm. that's yeah. the trinity yeah and then you have on. a cucumber sword <laughs> just really shove it up there you know that's that's the 
Oh, beautiful. All right. Okay, Ryan. I'm. You're not ready. I'm. I'm not. I have no fucking clue about <laughs> the answer to the question you're about to ask me. It is time for is it science or the church? Oh man, I don't know a lot about like Japanese history, but I don't think they're a very religious country. Um, well, they just don't practice Catholicism, so they have a. I mean, yeah, I know I they got that. Yeah, Buddhism? I guess I should say when I, I just assume when we're doing science in the church, it's always like the Catholic church because 90% of the time that's what it is. So I'm going to go with science. Ooh. Oh, guess what? You get, you get a point because. Whoa. What was science? that? Science. just <laughs> fell. <laughs> that was I'll Ryan's take reality take crashing. <laughs> It was a stretch. I don't know what just fell. That was crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'll take the dub. Um, yeah, that was a man. That was a shot in the dark. Usually, I feel pretty confident about these. But you're crushing it this season. You got you got two, <laughs> two for two. two right yeah, now. let's go. You gotta you gotta have a win somewhere. You know that's yeah exactly yeah. Well, no, I'm not getting one anywhere else. <laughs> All right, so anyway. I want you to change to this slide. Oh yes. Yeah you're not ready for it um mm -hmm. so i will explain what's going on for okay. all of you listeners there is believed to me not one not two but multiple remains of kappas that have been found oh. so there is a collection of different kappa mummies believed to have been crafted during the edo period and at this time, there was some serious scientific literature devoted to the study of these creatures. Huh. So, oh, this was the word I didn't look up how to say it. If I butcher it now, you guys are going to hear Siri's voice over me saying it right. Hey, y'all. This is where I would put the pronunciation of this word from a source that isn't myself saying it correctly. But after spending a disgusting amount of time trying to find how to pronounce it online, I wasn't able to. So my best attempt is Suko Kura Yaka. But hey, that may be completely wrong. Anyway, let's head back to the episode. Siri really nailed that one. Crush it. She's, <laughs> she's doing God's work because I'm not. Um, from 1820... For example, is a compounding of kappa. I said that so wrong. I know I did. <laughs> Ryan, can you please? How do you say that? Go. Compendium. Let me try that again. Uh -huh. For example, sorry, you guys. I forgot how to say it again. Compendium. <laughs> this book. For example, is a collection of kappa related information gathered from a variety of sources from Japan and China. The book, which is the house of the Iwas Bunko Library, includes numerous kappa sketches, several of which that are shown that we showed earlier in the slideshow. Okay. Um, so the Sojinji Buddhist temple in us Akusa district of Tokyo is said to have a mummified arm of a kappa that has been enshrined within the chapel hall since 1818. Wow. So some experts have dismissed these kappa mummies as nothing more than Edo period artists getting creative and using different animal parts of monkeys, owls, and even stingrays to bring this creature to life. Okay. So they didn't but... DNA test any of that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the the coagulated slime that gets DNA tested, not the not the but... <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I, to me, I think there's something here. I I wish I had it. I remember like three years ago when I first learned about them. There was a video cir circulating of these people swimming in a river in Japan, and like they like got attacked by one. And it was mm. crazy, and I'm so mad I couldn't find it again because I wanted to show you. Like okay. that's what took notes so long. Yeah, I and just it sucks. Find the video. 
Yeah, and it sucks too because the video was like, it was obviously like a person water was like trying to take like a picture of their friend, yeah. and they like, so like it it's not the best like it's moving a oh, little but yeah, you like of course, yes. I know I know oh, I yeah. I knew you wouldn't like oh, it but uh, I wanted to I, show you from two thousand and two. That's all right. It's fine. It's fine. fine. One day. One day we're going to have 4K footage of every cryptid and folklore creature. When we when we do photos this mo- next month, I pray the universe throws a cryptid in the background of mm. one of the photos. Even if you don't see it and we all see it, I would be okay with that. Yeah. Just, I want you and a cryptid in a photo. Mm-hmm. And we're both and blurry. Y- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't ask for a lot. Something. Oh, that'd be this funny. Is, this is where all my manifestation spells are going to for the yeah. next year. <laughs> Who needs podcast growth when you can just do this? Yeah. Uh, woo, okay. Let's, uh, you did good. I can't believe you guessed science. Damn. I know. I don't know. How do you, what do you think of the idea of a kappa mummy? Are you, are you like? <laughs> a kappa mummy? Um, there, there's a museum <laughs> with, um, um okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah let's just lower report it let me All just right. let me know uh. <laughs> speaking of museums did you all know we have a fan art page on our website that's like oh, our that's... museum oh wow well guess what now you do <laughs> and if you have any fan art Please share it with us. Uh, you can tag us on Instagram, post it on our Discord channel. Hell, you can email it to us. Uh, links for all of these different sources you can find at alluring.com forward slash links, L I N K S, or just go to our website. Everything's easy to navigate. I've been doing UI UX design for a while, so I promise you will find it within the first two to three clicks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and listen, if you're like, I'm above technology i'm off the grid but you want to send us something you can send us something because we have a p.o box and i would love to get stuff that isn't junk mail in our p.o box crazy (laughs) that would be what would make it worth it (laughs) um so if you'd like to mail us something you can do a loring podcast and then you could do my name if you want or so Kimmy Hammonds or just a Loring podcast and the address is 1935 South 1100 East PO Box 522001 Salt Lake City, Utah 84152. Again, Ooh. if I said too much, if the numbers confused you like they confused me, you can go to our website loring.com and we have it right on there. So so send us send us your art. We'd love to see it. And major alert, the shop has been updated. So check out the online shop today. If you have not, Kimmy has updated all of the prints, stickers, and even added some new Camp Counselor Mothman cowboy merch because 2024 is the year of the cowboy. Um, Anyway, head over to alluringshop.com today. All right. Lore, let's go back to our line. It's the only time Ryan gets that. You just gotta let him have it. Yeah, I, got it. <laughs> I needed that. I need the hell. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're both we're both in the chaotic neutral. Yeah, yeah. Part. I at first I thought for sure they were gonna be evil, but like none of my stories had them actually do anything besides kind of doing some sick pranks on people. Um <laughs> and I don't think it's evil. I mean the man who tried to burn his house down with lighter fluid and uh paint thinner after the coppa, that seems more evil than anything the coppas did, so That's fair. It that's the thing is like I feel like there are all warnings for coppas, but we don't have any proof of someone getting hurt. Yeah. By a coppa. Yeah. You know. So that's fair. Yeah, so no, yeah, we're all kind. Of, we're in the same. Uh, 
I, I put mine a little like more towards center just so we could see both of them, but I'm pretty much the same spot, just down, pure, pure, just chaos. Yeah, so Ryan and I are on the same page. Wow. We will see how long this lasts. Yep. It's enjoy it. This mm-hmm. is the equivalent of an eclipse. You Episode know? 69 is what's going to really make or break this uh, <laughs> this friendship. <laughs> Ryan only knows a few of the episodes ahead of time, and that's one mm-hmm. he knows. And you guys, I know deep in your hearts, you were yeah, like, you know what it. in the world would yeah. Kimmy pick for episode 69? Yeah. Cast your votes. I'll put it as the <laughs> Spotify thing. What yeah. do you think what, I pick? What episode 69 be? What do you think I messaged Ryan? Hey, you know what we should do for episode 69? Mm-hmm. Think about it. I know yeah. you guys know. <laughs> all right that will be the next giveaway yeah. <laughs> if you guess it right i'll send you a sticker <laughs> oh, anyway let's uh let's do our our takeaways and get out of here would you like to go first on this one i got mine if you need to think about it i need to think about it. can you go first this time all right here's what you're gonna do folks if you're gonna go swimming in a copper river you're gonna go go ahead hit up your local adult store and get yourself a plug you're gonna plug yourself up because they can't they can't shove what what was it called the uh shira shira kodoma yeah if you're already filled so you don't yeah i can't just walk away because we're like three <laughs> minutes from the end of the episode <laughs> I you can end it right there that's fine <laughs> look you gotta protect your shira kodoma it's where your soul is held yeah, keep that inside. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not even doing a takeaway this week. That's how we're ending it. I'm, All right, I'm done, you guys. This is great. This is. I'm alluring. You guys are great. This right. is great. Maybe see you next time, unless Kimmy uh, yells at me after we uh, end the episode right here. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Bye. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>